guys, today we're going to do a simple image gallery based on FXGL and it will look something like this. So you'll have a window, you'll have thumbnails um, at the bottom and then you can click on image and it will be displayed in sort of full resolution um, in your main uh, part of the window. Uh, this is basically a border pane. Um, this is the center of the border pane and then this is the bottom. So I've prepared a few images. Um, they are of the same, um, they have the same resolution, 600 by 450. And um, to achieve best results, um, you'll need to have images with the same resolution. So now uh, we're still using FXGL. So if you haven't done, um, if you haven't downloaded FXGL yet, then this is a good time to do so. Um, there, there are a few tutorials before this one to install and make sure everything is working. And the installation process is just a few clicks, um, just adding um, FXGL library to build path which is, um, yeah, so FXGL005, that's the one we're using now. Um, also, it helps you to load images um, as textures automatically, so you might want to copy all of your images that you want to use in the application um, under your source folder, then um, assets, and then textures. Make sure you get everything correctly, because this is exactly the um, directory where FXGL will be looking for textures and if a library can do something for you you might as well um, allow it to do it or just load your um, images directly doesn't matter because um, JavaFX and FXGL are tightly integrated so you'll be able to use them interchangeably alright so um, yeah this is tutorial 23 um, FXGL image gallery is the class that we're going to be using uh, today's imports are um, these, so um, yeah, basically just copy them. Now we extend game application as always. Um, what well we've been extending um, just Java application, Java FX application, but now we are using game application anyway. So we have just a um, single field, which is a list of um, images and where we sort of cache our images that we've just loaded. So we'll start uh, with the main function, which is um, just launch. So in its settings, uh, we initialize our window to 600 by 600, actually our window frame. Um, then we set the title to this, and that's pretty much it. In game initialization, we don't have anything because we don't really have a game now, so it's just um, empty. Uh, an update is also empty, and what we have here is just init uh, um, init UI and then load images and load images FS. Um, I'll come back to them in a minute. So first of all, what we do is we load images. Um, so don't worry about them um, for now. Um, just keep in mind that they load images into our images list. So after this method returns, this list will contain images. If no error occurred, then everything went fine. Um, that is our... Actually, I'll run this and then... Okay, so that part here, the um, full image uh, where it says image one right now, is um, this object. We set fit width to 600 because um, our window pane is um, 600 wide. So if you're using different values, um, you might as well change this um, right here. Height is 450, so this part will be 450, which means that it leaves 150 pixels for the thumbnails. 
and we set image the fir very first image from the images list. Then we create a horizontal box, which is um, this um, at the bottom. So we um, do this twenty times, and we create uh, we take random image out of the images list, and then set. Um, image to each of the views. So we create an image view and then set a random image. This uh, will return a random index to this list. And you set fit width to 200 so this um, small single thumbnail will be 200 wide and 150 high which sum uh, totals up to the uh, width of our uh, window and a bit more because we're using hbox with uh, five pixels as the spacing between two elements so you can see that there is a small space between two um, elements in the horizontal box finally when the view is clicked so um, view refers to the thumbnail really so when uh, it is clicked we take the reference to our full view which is this part and we set its image to the image of the thumbnail or image of the view and we then add a view to the list of children of horizontal box so that they could be displayed here We then create a scroll pane, which is that thing, because if we didn't have that, then um, you would have a very long horizontal box, which will stretch our window pane. So we then wrap our horizontal box with scroll pane. We set maximum width of the scroll pane uh, to 600, which is um, equal to our width um, of the window pane and scroll set vertical bar policy never we don't want to have vertical bar because there is no point really finally is the border pane which is um, sort of the root element although we already have a root element it's just um, second root element if you want set center is the full view and bottom is the scroll pane so it's really matches one-to-one uh, -to, -one to it and because there are no left right or top um, elements initialized the center view will just cover all of them and once we've done that we um, add our border pane to the list of uh, UI children so that the whole thing could be um, shown on the screen Okay, now to our load images. Um, we're using one of the um, FXGL methods. So we have access to Asset Manager. And we don't initialize it because it is um, initialized in the game application. So we just use the instance. We call load texture. So basically um, any resource that you want to load, you can load uh, from Asset Manager and we're now loading texture so we simply pass the name of the image as it is uh, without any directory information or anything because we have placed them under assets um, textures so it already knows that it will be looking for this particular uh, image under this directory although it returns a type texture as you can see um, Texture is a subclass of image view, so we can uh, initialize this to image view instead. Now, this low texture method will do a few things for you. First, it will um, open the physical resource, which is uh, an actual image file um, on your hard drive. Then, it will um, parse the pixel data to an image object. So image object is different uh, from image view. And image is, uh, so image object 
basically contains all the pixel data um, of your physical image. Um, an image view is used as a node which wraps around that pixel data to show on screen. However, per JavaFX um, specifications, we cannot have the same node um, appear in different trees, or in other words, we cannot have a single node to have multiple parents. So, um, but we don't want to load texture many times because doing that will access the um, physical resource on your hard drive. And first of all, it's very slow. And second, we already loaded the pixel data. There is no point in doing that again. So what we do then is we simply obtain image, which is the pixel data from our image view and then add to the list of um, images so we're basically caching our images and this is the basic concept of caching um, okay enough of the theory for now um, so we do this if something happens uh, like an error or an exception then images won't be loaded and it will uh, print fade to load images it will also print the message of the error and then exit the application because there is no point in continuing. So um, we also here we create image view. Like I said, you cannot have the same image view because image view, um, if you ha um, hold control and then left click, it will um, show you the source code and then you can see that it extends node and node cannot have multiple parents so we cannot have same image view just placed all over the place we have to create a new one but we can reuse the image which is the pixel data which is the most important thing really okay now the second method um, load images fs so I'm just going to demonstrate that uh, What it basically does, it creates uh, a platform specific window, um, open dialog window, so that you can select a um, select images yourself, basically. So let me just go to desktop, um, images, and then select all of them. So it is pretty much the same application, it does the same but it loads um, images differently. So if you don't want to load them from your um, textures folder under assets, uh, then you can do this uh, manually. But typically, if you're developing a game, you would have all your image resources uh, with you under this folder and package, package everything into a jar file so that it could be executed and run from the same, uh, from the same file. But if you're developing a business application or something like an image gallery for the end user so that the end users can use their own images, this could be a um, helpful method. It's quite short. Um, it is, uh, we're using a file chooser, which is JavaFX um, class for um, opening native operating system dialogs. And for opening files or choosing files, folders, and things like that. So we then initialize directory or initial directory, um, which is new file um, dot and then a forward slash. This means uh, the current directory, so where the application um, is running at. And then we um, get extension filters and add our own. So. Um, this is the name of the filter image files we only want PNG and JPEG files so when we uh, open the dialog it will say that we're looking for only these files and none other uh, will suffice no actually there's so if you cancel it um, you'll oh yeah right I canceled it and didn't exit so it goes back here and then tries to load images which haven't been loaded so you get a null pointer exception 
or actually no, um, you'll get different kind of section because there are no elements. Yeah, index out of bounds. Because this um, list contains no elements and you're trying to access the first element and it says that um, index is out of bounds. So you get um, this kind of exception. So we need to um, take care of that as well. So if files not null, which means that we have loaded the files, else um, just print something like um, files not chosen and then exit. You want to pass a different integer instead of zero because zero means that you're exiting um, like normally, nothing happened. So you only want to pass minus one saying um, we have exited normally. So now if we click cancel, um, it also follows not chosen and then exit the application so that we don't enter here and um, try to do something that we're not allowed to anymore. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, you create a reference to a list of files and you show a multiple dial, basically you call this method and then pass main stage. You don't have to, you can pass null. all. Um, it basically means they will block your window and main stage is basically a window. The reference to main stage again comes from game application and this is the stage that we're using. So this method returns a list of files and these files are basically what the user has chosen. And if it's not null, then it, um, the user has chosen something. And as you've just seen, um, this is to take care of the fact when the user um, doesn't choose anything and presses cancel. Now, if he has chosen files, then we um, loop through all the files that we have. So for each file, we try to load an, uh, or to obtain input stream to that file. So this is, um, we get, first of all, we get path to it. And um, this is the new IO as opposed to um, old IO that we're, um, we were using. So basically new IO uses um, methods from the files class, which is more convenient. We obtain the input stream. Uh, we use it within the try with resources block so that when we exit this block, it will automatically close all the resources. And by close, that means it will close the actual physical resource, um, the file that it's, it's been accessing. We create a new image out of this input stream, so it will parse it for us. And then we add it to the list of images like we did with um, our FXGL image loading. And again, if there is an exception, we say fail to load images with the exception uh, message, and then we um, exit. And this is pretty much it for this tutorial. And thanks for watching.